eternal God, this day we come humbly before you and ask your blessing upon our county and these county commissioners. In your goodness, be present to our citizens and allies who are far from home and seeking safety. May our elected leaders make it their aim to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Finally, dear Lord, give the members of this body passion for their cause, eloquence in debate, and respect for those with whom they disagree. Most especially, grant them, at the end of the day, the certain knowledge that they have served their county well. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning to each of you, and welcome to those of our citizens that are in attendance. And for those that may be viewing online, we welcome you this morning. I would ask for those that are in attendance with us, if you will, please make sure that your phones are on vibrate as we go through and conduct the people's business today. Commissioners, you have there before your agenda. Are there any additions or deletions to the agenda? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. I have a motion and a second to accept the agenda as presented. Any discussion on the motion? Hear none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion passed. Next item would be a public hearing on the CDBG in our closeout. I'm going to ask if Mr. Chip Bartlett would come and give some opening comments. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you for having me, especially in your morning session. Uh, yes, today we have a closeout public hearing, basically a housekeeping item for um, our FY17 CDBG NR. Uh, Craven County was a recipient of this, this grant to assist low to moderate income homeowners that were impacted by uh, Hurricane Matthew. In order to maintain compliance, we were required to hold a closeout public hearing once all program activities are complete. Uh, the activities included the rehabilitation and elevation of one low-income household at 125 Chips Road in Vanceboro that had received flooding damage in Matthew. To date, we have received no written questions or comments from the citizens via the public notice in the newspaper. However, I will be glad to answer any questions during the public hearing. And also in regards to CDBG monies, as you may recall, the last time I was here, um, the county has applied, submitted another application for this next round of funding, and we should probably know something in the first part of next year. Thank you, Mr. Bartlett. Do we have a motion to open the public? So moved. Second. I have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. Any discussion on the motion? Hear none. All those in favor, signify five by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, we stand in public hearing. How are there any citizens that have signed up, Mr. Vice Chair? No, sir. All right. We would give any of our citizens that are present that desire to speak during this public hearing the opportunity. Make a motion to go to public hearing. All right. Second. I have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. Any discussion on the motion? Hear none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We're back now to the board. Mr. Bartlett, do you have any closing comments or anything you need to share with us? Yes, sir. That's right. uh, pretty much it for a closeout public hearing. Right. We thank you so much for your attendance today. Thank you. The next item is the consent agenda. Commissioners, you have there before you the minutes of the November 1, 2021 regular session, the tax releases and refunds, the adoption of the records retention and disposition schedules for programs and general records, Economic development request to set a public hearing for Project Well on December the 6th, 2021 <coughs> at 7 p.m. Another request to set a public hearing for Project Project Drum on December the 6th, 2021 at 7 p.m. And then the ABC travel policy. Are there any items that the commissioners desire to remove from the consent agenda? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the consent agenda. Right, is there any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, if you will please call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McKay? Yes. Is Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Thank you. We're honored this morning to have uh, members of the ABC board here with us and uh, staff who are going to make their annual uh, report to us. And we ask at this time if the chairman of that board, Mr. Chip Chagnon, would come forward. And uh, I know you're going to introduce those in attendance too. So I welcome. Will, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. It's an honor to be here. Mr. Chairman and members, it's always uh, great to come see you. And, and yes, uh, we have several of the folks, and we'll get to them in a second here. Uh, my, uh, I have the second slide there. Or is, I don't see the little thingy here. 
I think they'll do it for you if oh, you okay. just tell them when you're ready. Okay. Next slide, please. There you go. Uh, for our newest uh, uh, member of the board, there's our uh, mission statement, ma'am. I know that the rest of the commissioners are well, uh, uh, well familiar with it, but uh, just bring to your attention the, the aspect of the ABC, the, the most important part of Craven County is the controlling aspect, uh, and, and then, then follow on with the others. So we like to think we do a great job on that. Um, everything that we do flows from that mission statement. All the monies that we apply, all of our efforts flow to that directly to that mission statement. Next slide, please. And yes, um, I am proud to welcome uh, Ms. Uh, Creighton. Thank you, ma'am, for being with us today. Ms. Carroll, appreciate it. Our general manager, Paul Brown, and our uh, chief financial officer with us today, Esther Patterson. So thank you all. We have a new member. Uh, and you may be familiar with uh, Kenny Morris III. He's a, a newest member on the board, and uh, the other members, one of them is to my immediate right, and this, Mr. Booker. So uh, we have two members here today. Um, we also uh, have uh, uh, today um, about 32 people working for us in the Craven County ABC board, uh, and. Um, uh, they also send their best regards. Next slide, please. So we've had a busy year, board. We had a busy year. We've, uh, uh, like, like you, we've had to cope with COVID up front and very personal. <clears throat> the governor uh, said that we were an essential business. Uh, so we were not uh, closed, uh, uh, but, but for uh, two days. Uh, we did have one case. Uh, our employee was directly involved with COVID, we had to shut the store down mm -hmm. and completely uh, clean all the bottles in that store and in all the back, so you can imagine that. Uh, we have had another employee that did have COVID, but uh, it was at home at the time and past the three or four days, uh, so we did not have to go through all those protocols. Um, but uh, we've had some good news. Uh, we've worked hard, uh, James City, uh, last year we promised the board that we would uh, apply some uh, funding to that store and get it to look uh, first class, uh, which we have. We expanded 33%. Uh, I believe it, uh, it's one of the finest stores in North Carolina, uh, certainly. Uh, if, and we invite all of you, you to come by and visit us. You don't to make a purchase, but we like that. But just identify yourself to the manager and they'll give uh, you your, your pictures are in the, uh, the back and they're familiar with you. Uh, uh, but uh, please come by and, and see the store. Um, Havelock, uh, we also had uh, upgrades. Um, uh, we've had the, uh, the floor completely done in Havelock and in the back room. So some of it you may not see. That's why you'd have mm -hmm. to go see the manager. But uh, we never had a galley back there. There was no uh, area for them to eat. <clears throat> uh, so now all of our stores have a galley uh, and a proper place for, for folks to, to uh, sit down and, and uh, have a break. You'll notice when you come into our stores, all new lighting. Uh, they're very bright, very cheery uh, in, in the Craven County stores and uh, very safe. Um, we, expanded, we expanded our uh, security services uh, this year. Um, of course, we have the, the deputies uh, of uh, Craven County who, who work alongside ALE agents to provide that level of security. <coughs> Uh, and uh, you can be assured that you have one of the safest uh, ABC boards in, in North Carolina, thanks to them. Uh, so uh, where we are, we, we can tell you that we've had another little problem along the way that you're familiar with, you hear about it all the time, and that's global interruption. Um, you know, when you look at the, our business, you, we get about 30 to 40 percent of it is imports. Uh, most of the gins, quite a few of the vodkas, uh, the liqueurs, uh, scotch, obviously, um, they all come from other places, and these other places have had some uh, real problems. The cognacs especially were hit uh, in France. Uh, even today, 22% uh, uh, last week of the Hennessy company had COVID. Uh, so that, that's an example. Uh, so we have that issue, plus we have the issue of the bottles, the cardboard, the caps. Uh, we're, we're, we're seeing a, a lot of 
uh, strange things come in. Um, uh, different color caps that we're used to um, and bottles that we haven't seen. Uh, but we get by all that uh, and uh, we're, we're working, we're working uh, with it. <clears throat> At one time here about ooh, uh, two months ago, we were down to about 42, 43 percent inventory. Um, through your ABC board working very closely with the industry doing direct shipments from the distillers, uh, which is legal in North Carolina, we had just notified the state, and getting truckloads uh, delivered. Um, we have offset quite a bit of that. We're back on the road, uh, and we're back up to about 80, 82 percent. And we expect it, frankly, to not get much better now until spring. You're probably going to be about 82 to 85 percent. So the, we will have spot uh, shortages along the way. Um, and we will tell you that as the policy of the Craven County ABC Board, uh, this board with uh, a, a lot of uh, thought, um, when it comes to splitting the solemn and the baby, and we get a case of, of, of uh, allocated uh, alcohol, um, frankly, we're, we're going to give that case to our um, liquor by the drink customers. I, this, they suffered quite a bit, as you well know. Uh, we try uh, to, at the expense of having our front door customers perhaps a little angry at us, but we made a conscious decision to try to help our tourism out uh, by giving, by giving the liquor by the drink folks uh, when we have the shortages. So we will, you may hear that from both parties. Uh, uh, we will tell you that yes, that's that's a policy that your board has, um, and and um, we we still don't have enough to to give to everybody. Uh, next slide, please. So, um, wh where are we going uh, this year? Uh, you know, we heard about last year. We'll, we'll tell you about that. We're we're, we're going to dis discuss this morning, right after this meeting, with our liquor by the drink folks, a, a program that we've been looking at for the longest time here, about a year. But because of the situation, we've not wanted to have to institute still another change. And that is a centralized distribution point for our liquor by the drink customers. Uh, we're going to dedicate uh, a portion of our warehouse as a store for the liquor by the drink. And we are going to be commencing here in January deliveries um, from our store to their door. Uh, deliveries on a on a scheduled basis, which we think is fair and equitable. It's good for both parties, and th that way, our stores will no longer have a split mission. Uh, the back door and the front door, and it's caused some some issues over the years, and particularly now, um, we are getting more folks coming through the front door uh, than we ever had. A about two years ago, I briefed this board and told you that about 18 percent of our business was um, Lick by the drink. Uh, I'll give you a comparison to, to, so you'll know. Carteret County is 35 percent. You, you can imagine they have all the beach, the beach crowd. Um, so this year, our Lick by the drink accounts for 13 percent. That's because the front door, uh, folks in Craven County, uh, have, have increased their buying, but they frankly have been buying upscale items. We always knew that about Craven County, but uh, it is it is true. Uh, we we have much more middle up uh, top shelf uh, purchases, and we sell frankly to a lot of uh, uh, zip codes from out of uh, out of our area, uh, Raleigh area. People coming down to the beach, perhaps people coming tourism in there. They they like our stores. Uh, it's, that's a good problem to have. Um, so uh, we're doing a lot more business in the front. We need to pay attention to that. We need more space in the front, and that's why you'll see James City, 33%. The downtown store, we have put $350,000 in that store between the, the front part of it falling into <laughs> Front Street here almost last year, uh, and the store now, which would be, be a grand reopening here in about two weeks. Um, that store has expanded uh, 35%, so you're going to see a much larger store there. So we're really going uh, quite, uh, quite forward here. And then, of course, what we have working uh, with us uh, is the, the Bridgeton store. Uh, Bridgeton store, all the permits have been pulled. 
They have been all approved. Um, the plans have been uh, developed. Uh, that package, the, the, the bid package, will be going on the street probably in about four to five weeks, uh, and that uh, 60 days, and then we'll uh, award a contract on that in 11, about 11 months, 10, 11 months from that award a contract, that store will be opening up. That store, uh, I should say, uh, campus, because it's a campus. On one side is going to be the new uh, warehouse, and on the uh, far side will be the new store. And both of them will be state-of-the-art. Uh, it's always been the intention of this board um, that when that happens, uh, that we uh, offer our present warehouse uh, to uh, Craven County um, for, for needs that may be uh, at that time. So those plans are going forward, um, and uh, we're, we're on target. Um, our architect tells us we're, we're on target, and we have several folks that want to be in this bid package because this is going to be a very unique store for North Carolina and very unique campus. Uh, I, I would be very remiss if I didn't talk about our wonderful employees. They have to have gone through um, living hell on this, this COVID thing. Uh, folks coming through the door with the shortage thing, you're kind of very angry at them. Uh, we very not, more telephones. I, I can tell you this year as your, the chairman, I've received more, more telephone calls than I had uh, my, uh, the five years as a chair. Hey, boy, it's, uh, some of them are unkind. Uh, some don't understand. You know, we try to make them understand. Uh, this is, you know, how come I can go here? How come I can we hear that? The general manager, we, general manager, I uh, one day decided we're going to go visit other counties in our neighborhood. You know, so I visited a, a couple. I visited Lanier, and then he and I visited Carteret. We found all these things, my friends, to be not true. They, everybody is suffering through this thing, um, and um, they're all, they're all uh, low on product. Um, so we, we have given our, our uh, uh, employees a raise uh, this year beyond the, uh, the cost of living raise. Uh, we had to do this because our industry, uh, you can see it clearly, um, the signs, $15 an hour working at Mickey D's or something. I mean, we're, we're trying to ask people to sell. Uh, yes, we do have $1,800 bottles of uh, alcohol, and we do sell them. Um, to make purchases of that and have an understanding of uh, our business, and um, we, we just couldn't get folks that really were paying them. Even though we were, we were doing well up to that point, uh, things have changed, and, and the board um, has, has seen this and has uh, answered the call. So we're taking care of our people. We're taking care of our stores. Um, uh, we had our audit this year, which I'm going to be rendering on to you, sir. Uh, and it says once again that your Craven County ABC store is one of the best uh, in North Carolina and has been in the medium-sized stores is in the top three, uh, so you don't, don't have uh, that problem. Okay, next slide, please. So this is where we want to go, uh, and, and it's really uh, uh, actually small. The stores now, there's still a few things we want to do, floors here and a few lights there, but the, the five-year modernization program uh, for all, for for all intents and purposes, will be complete with the downtown store, uh, and and we'll just be doing some other things. Um, you know, we're working with the uh, sheriff's department, uh, and we've uh, uh, instituted. This may be crazy, but people do crazy things in front of ABC stores, even though the the law says that you can be. It's like the school. You know, if you do drugs in front of a school, you it's, it's a bigger impact uh, on your uh, chances of going to jail. Well, it's the same thing with the ABC store. Uh, and we have uh, put new cameras in our uh, ABC stores and outside the stores. Uh, and one set of these cameras will identify cars, uh, license plates uh, in, in a matter of seconds. It's called Flock. Um, and it will identify uh, uh, license plates uh, that are there's warrants out for individuals arrest and we have uh, already already we just instituted and already made uh, two arrests uh, outstanding severe warrants um, 
uh, uh, people uh, coming through. So the safety's been upgraded even further um, uh, with, that, with this flock. Uh, the other thing that we've done, um, we're working with the Sheriff's Department, with the, we've reinstituted the DEER program, uh, and uh, we're gonna be going to the, the first graduation class here of, of, of the kids. Um, to make sure that uh, that's where we try to stop the bad habits. And we're working with the Boys and Girls Club. We've awarded a grant for the Boys and Girls Club. So we're out in your communities uh, on a different level, not just uh, you know doing this. And in keeping with the law, uh, we're continuing to give uh, Craven County a larger share of, of money dedicated for the use that you may see fit, which uh, um, we've been um, to, to believe it's going to be going down to the uh, uh, the clinic down at the Chichem in, in Jacksonville. Uh, next slide, please. So here's where we are, and, and if you're in a business world, this is a very nice slide. Um, this shows some very steady growth, and I know we have several businessmen and women here today. Uh, that is a uh, that is a good slide um, to have, and that tells you. <clears throat> Uh, that the uh, the increase sales means that that the state of North Carolina is getting some increased money and the county of Craven. Uh, next slide, please. So here's, here's our tail of the bottle, if you will, that gives you a little bit more detail of, of that, uh, and it's kind of a giveaway here. Uh, I I like to think um, when you see the the aspect and you're zeroing in on that. 1.291 um, million dollars for Craven County. Please make sure you drop your eyes a little bit lower because we give other checks to Craven County. They're just made out with, with the memo to different parts of Craven County. But it, these are all cost avoidance to our taxpayers. Uh, and you know, when you lay out the bill, when you lay out paying folks, that's. Um, eighty thousand, a hundred thousand dollars that you didn't have to write out. So, really, uh, Craven County uh, is quite a benefactor. As long and, and uh, the cities and towns this year, one hundred and forty-three thousand dollars are going to go to. Um, um, obviously, uh, Newburn is the principal, has two stores. Havelock is doing rather well, uh, and even Little Vanceboro is going to get a check this year. You know, so. Uh, we, we've had a very good year, and um, so there we are. Um, oh, next slide, please. So uh, having said that, Mr. Chairman, I hand off uh, as required under the laws and general statutes uh, that my appointing authority get a copy of our audit, but probably more important uh, is this check today um, for one million forty thousand four hundred and forty five dollars and ninety five cents and knowing that you'll uh, you'll 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 spend it wisely jack i'm sure uh, and who would like to get this sir there it is sir you have a million dollar check in your hand i'll touch it <laughs> there you go sir thank you very much thank you. Once again, we appreciate the opportunity to come before the board, and uh, we thank you very much for your support. That's very important that as we go forward, we have continued support from this board. Thank you very much. Any questions for, uh, yes, Commissioner Lyon? Chip, could you get into detail a little bit more about your delivery service? Okay, sir. Uh, the delivery service is going to be uh, based upon um, the present need. Everybody will have at least one free delivery. And I say the free because the state of North Carolina does say uh, in that statute that allows this. And by the way, this is a, a statute driven, driven, uh, 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 not, not something that we just necessarily thought of. I'd love to say we thought of it, uh, but um, it came out in the uh, North Carolina ABC Commission requirement that we have um, uh, offer this, this service. So we're gonna do it free. We're not gonna charge them. They, they pay enough money as it is. Um, everybody's going to get at least one, sir, even the smaller groups will, will uh, 
uh, will have an opportunity. Um, the larger deliveries twice a week free. Um, the, uh, uh, there are folks, uh, you have one down in your community, a, a, a Mexican uh, a restaurant that gets 250 cases a month, and they do it once a month. They don't want it any more than once a month. Wow. Um, so we're going to tailor as much as we can uh, to their needs. We're going to discuss that with the Liquor by the Drink folks today. They're going to have a, um, we're having a workshop. Everybody's been invited uh, to these, these workshops. Um, so uh, we believe it's going to be a you know, fair and equitable uh, situation. We, I, you know, I just said we can't continue on what we're going. We have some of them, very bad habits. 14 orders a week. We have one, 18 orders a week. Three, four, five a day. Come in and get two. We lose money. You know, I have to stop somebody from doing something. I got to go in the back room. My burden rate on an employee is about $28 an hour. Um, and, and they're back there with three bottles of, of aristocrat. <laughs> we, we, lose, uh, we lose a lot of money sometimes, sir. So we, but they're all going to play. They're all going to have an opportunity to sit at the table and talk, give us their input. Can we get a list of who the attendees are at your meeting today? Absolutely, sir. If you could, please. And I saw Ms. Smith, ma'am? Yes. I, I have a, two questions. Yes, ma'am. The first one uh, addresses the, the increase that uh, you stated was a good thing, and it is depending on how we look at it, but does sure. this mean we are serving more people? Uh, does it mean people are drinking more? No, not, necessar not necessarily, ma'am. Um, we are has certainly having an increase, mm -hmm. but it, in sales, people coming through the door is actually less. They're buying, what they're doing, they're not buying the lower end, they're tending to buy, you know, one bottle of a high end, and that, that's, so that's they're buying better alcohol. Yes, ma'am. So the... Yeah, and they're, and they're buying fewer bottles. Craven County is way behind the state when it comes to uh, that. We see it every month. The board is, sees the sees uh, you know what what our sales are, and no, but Craven County it, it, it's uh, we have a, a big retirement community. They don't drink a whole bunch of uh, alcohol, but when they do go out, they get an 18-year Scotch. You know, at the, they tend to do that. Um, but no, they're not buying more uh, bottles. We do sell a lot of bottles. I'm not going to tell you we don't. We sell about 340,000 bottles a year. My, my next question is for about individuals purchasing alcohol. Yes, ma'am. I, I understand that <coughs> when a person goes to a restaurant and they're, they're obviously drinking too much or drunk, it's the responsibility of the restaurant owner or server to stop service. Yes, ma'am. They would not serve them more than they, than they can handle. Do you have any responsibility if a person is continuously coming in, you know, buying a bottle every day, two or three bottles a day or whatever, do you have any authority or any responsibility in those sales? No, ma'am. Uh, here's here's where, where, where our responsibility lies. Make sure, obviously, they're 21. Make sure they're not under any uh, appearance of uh, influences of alcohol. Mm -hmm. Uh, making sure that so if they're under the influence, you don't sell. Them. Oh no, ma'am, we don't oh, do it. We don't sell. That's what I was about. Okay. Yes, ma'am, we do it, and, and we have the sheriff's uh, folks right in the back room um, to to make sure, and they're watching on a camera, and they see somebody showing signs of our people are trained. Uh, we have a zero tolerance for selling underage. If, if any of our uh, associates sell one bottle to it, they are immediately fired. Um, yeah, we, we, we uh, pay attention to that. And we also, ma'am, sponsor a bar, what's called bars course, uh, with our ALE agents, and they, they teach um, bar people uh, how to watch for this, how to serve, and make sure they're not over-serving, that's what it's called in the business. Thank you, ma'am, for your questions. Any Thank other you. questions from the board? I'd like to make a state. change in the ABC board happened, I believe, as I remember, in 2011, because I was here. Uh, at that time, 
the county was receiving about $250,000 a year. Is I'm not mistaken, is that correct? Yes, sir. And uh, now we're receiving a million dollars a year. That's great. The other part I like about it is that liquor, the price of liquor has increased not because of the number of people buying it, because of the volume and the price that we're selling our liquor at today. In addition to that, a portion of this money is going to the schools, which helps the sheriff and the enforcement people in the liquor store business. I think uh, another thing, and Chip uses here, and Chip and I in, 19, in two, uh, 2011 discuss Vanceboro as a, 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 a store that we probably have to look at because it was not running in the black. And right now, Vanceboro is running in the black. So I think overall that the ABC board has improved 100% over what we took over in 2011. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Chagnon, we thank you. Thank you, sir. Vice pleasure. Chair Creighton, thank you for being here. Paul, thank you both. Thank you all for coming. All right. Next on the agenda is the redistricting and adoption resolution, and I'm going to ask if uh, County Manager will come forward. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think it may be appropriate if I uh, read the resolution into the record and then ask the board if they have any feedback. So this is uh, attachment four in your agenda, resolution of the Craven County Board of Commissioners adopting new electoral district boundaries. Whereas the Craven County Board of Commissioners is authorized and obligated under North Carolina General Statute 153A-22 <clears throat> to revise its county district boundaries to correct any population imbalances as shown by the federal census. And whereas the seven member Board of County Commissioners includes seven commissioners elected from seven districts. And whereas the electoral districts are subject to the constitutional and statutory requirement of one person, one vote and whereas the Board of County Commissioners has received and reviewed the population of its districts as determined by the 2020 Federal Census, and whereas the Board of County Commissioners has determined that the population of its districts is out of balance and the boundaries of the districts need to be altered to provide equal representation, and whereas on October 4, 2021, the Board of County Commissioners meeting in public selected criteria to guide the redistricting process and thereafter adopted seven guiding principles to be used in redistricting. And whereas on October 18th, 2021, the Board of Com County Commissioners received proposed redistricting plans identified as option A and option B. Whereas the Board of County Commissioners requested an additional proposed redistricting plan identified as option C. Whereas on November 1st, 2021, the Board of County Commissioners held a public hearing to review and consider proposed redistricting plans identified as option A, option B, and option C. And whereas meeting in public session on November 15th, 2021, the Board of County Commissioners considered and approved the redistricting plan identified as option C, a copy of which is attached here too. And whereas the redistricting plan approved by the Board of County Commissioners and presented in public satisfies the statutory and constitutional one person, one vote requirements. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Craven County Board of Commissioners as follows. One, the boundaries of the five electoral districts for Craven County are altered to follow the lines depicted on the attached redistricting plan identified as option C. The attached plan has been prepared from United States Census Bureau maps and the boundaries have been drawn to follow census block lines. A list of the census blocks in each district is attached for reference and to resolve any issue that might arise concerning the boundaries of the districts. Three, the new district boundaries shall be used for the next election of the members of the Board of County Commissioners and for each subsequent election until the boundaries are altered according to law. Four, a copy of the resolution with exhibits and the map showing the district boundaries shall be retained in the office of the clerk to the Board of County Commissioners. Five, a copy of this resolution with exhibits shall be provided to the Craven County Board of Elections with the request that the Board of Elections notify residents of applicable changes in the districts in which they vote. Number six, 
not later than 10 days after the day of adoption of this resolution, the clerk shall file in the Secretary of State's office and in the office of the Craven County Register of Deeds a certified copy of the resolution. Seven, a resolution adopted pursuant to the section shall be the basis of electing persons to the Board of County Commissioners at the first general election for members of the Board of Commissioners occurring after the resolution's effective date and thereafter. Eight, the resolution shall become effective upon its adoption. Adopted by the Craven County Board of Commissioners on this 15th day of November, 2021. Okay, commissioners, you've heard it. Uh, questions, Commissioner Liner. Number one. Yes, sir. I called it, as I said, it's supposed to be seven. Okay. My apologies. That got through from the consultant. I didn't, I didn't catch it. That is correct, though. So with that modification, Mr. Chairman. Okay, you've heard that one modification on um, line one. It would be the boundaries of the seven electoral districts. Okay, other questions, concerns? Chairman, I would make a motion. Second. We adopt the resolution. Okay. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution of the Craven County Board of Commissioners for adopting new electoral district boundaries. Discussion from the board. Hear no discussion. Madam Clerk, if you will, please call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Vice Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman <coughs> Jones? Yes. Right, thank Mr. You. Chairman, Commissioners, thank you. Uh, Jack, uh, uh, one question I would have just for our information and for the public. So what's the process now So, with, with this document? Where does it go? Yes, sir. So um, refer to number five and six of the resolution. Five basically states that we'll share it with the Craven County Board of Elections, and then they will notify uh, citizens of the change. Now, realize they're going to have to notify people have a lot of other changes as well, the folks that are doing redistricting. Melanie will be before you here in just a few minutes to talk to you about that. Second, we have to file it with the Secretary of State, which makes it official, and also with the Register of Deeds here in Craven County. And then from that point forward, um, the filing will open with the new districts in December. Okay. And I know Miss Melanie, when she gets here, she'll um, go in a little bit more detail. Yes, sir. Okay. Any, yes. Uh, when will the maps be updated on GIS and all this? Uh, version C will go just today. Now that you've adopted it, that'll be shown. Yep. Other questions? All right. Thank you, Jack. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, Commissioners, next on the departmental matters, we have social services. We've got several budget amendments. Mr. Jeffrey Merritt, good morning, sir. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners, County Manager. Um, we do have several budget amendments, the first being on your agenda. Um, we are rolling forward funds from last fiscal year um, from our senior programs, the meals programs, and the sunshine program. These funds are ones that um, are donated funds from clients, you know, that they can have the opportunity to give back to, to the program for the meals that they receive through it. And our sunshine program, although we weren't able to do run that program as much as we would like to last year due to COVID. You know, that is our respite program where we do give um, caretakers of individuals with cognitive illnesses such as Alzheimer's and dementia um, when they're still able to be maintained at home sometimes at our facilities so that they're able to go and um, you know do their daily do daily needs of the household which are oftentimes very difficult to do when you're caring for someone with that type of illness. So we're asking you that you please roll forward amount of $25,712 and we do use those funds to put back into the program um, and that's why we have to carve those out. Chair, make a motion to approve. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve <coughs> the budget amendment amount of $25,712. Any discussion on the motion? Hear none. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. All right. B. Our second budget amendment is in relation to adoption promotion funds. Um, these funds are ones that we receive when we are, the state sets a baseline for the number of adoptions that we're supposed to meet each year or their special adoptions such as sibling groups, things such as that, to where these adoption promotion funds are given to counties if they meet those baselines or adopt. Um, 
you know, children and sibling groups or other special categories. And um, we have to use these funds to promote adoption um, programs or promote, try to recruit adoptive families. Um, so we are asking to roll this money forward of $21,548 from last budget year to this year. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make, make a motion. A second a motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second for the budget amendment in an amount of $21,548. Any discussion on the motion? Your none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Mr. Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Mm -hmm. See. Um, our third amendment is related to the American Rescue Plan Act and funding that we received to offset food nutrition um, services administrative funding. Those positions are funded 50% federally, 50% county, and with the American Rescue Plan Act, the state determined to reimburse the counties um, for some of that funding. Um, Craven County was awarded $28,477, um, as you will see in the attachment. What we are asking is that that money be included in our budget. Um, we plan to use some of that for um, do some building modifications in our office to try to create some more office space in our income maintenance unit side. We have an auxiliary desk that was being used at one point, but it's no longer being done. So um, we can create a couple more offices there, um, which is sorely needed. And um, we would use the rest to you know, determine if we needed to contract any more employees as we, like everyone else, are um, you know, kind of being hard hit with you know, labor shortages at this time. So. Chairman, so moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve the budget amendment in the amount of $28,477. Any discussion on the motion? Hear none. Madam Clerk, please call, call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Vice Chairman Booker? Yes. Mr. Chairman Jones? Yes. <laughs> right, D. Um, and the last amendment, we came before you in September and where the state was allocating monies for children who have been in foster care um, and would be eligible for some um, special funding, a one-time allocation like a stipend that we received through, um, you know, as all of us was, was eligible for through some of the Recovery Acts. And what our staff did is that we were able to go through our records and try to locate as many of those individuals who were, who was eligible to receive those funds. Um, we were able to find a um, number of individuals to where if we were able to give them all of the stipend that would have seeded our original allocation. So what we did is that we went back to the state and stated that we need this much more money in the event there was money left from that pool. Um, there was money left from that pool from where all those who we were able to find would be able to be fully served with the amount which they were eligible for. Um, and what happens is that the state notified us of that amount, and we are asking to put that in the budget so that we can distribute the funds to those, um, I won't say children, now adults, um, but in the amount of $41,320. So moved. Right. We have a motion and a second to approve the budget amendment in the amount of $41,320. Any discussion on the motion? Hear none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Mr. Chairman Booker? Yes. Mr. Chairman Jones? Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Have a good day. All right. Next, we have a um, budget amendment from the Sheriff's Department from the International Paper. Good morning, Sheriff. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Uh, thank you for allowing us to come before you today. Uh, we've got an item that we're looking to add to our budget. We applied for a grant with the um, International Paper Company, uh, and we're awarded it in the amount of $5,000, and we're looking to use that for search and rescue equipment. Uh, some of our immediate needs are a drone. Uh, to assist with looking for folks not only when they flee from us but also when we're out trying to search for Good missing news. people as well and night vision goggles so we can continue these operations yeah. in low light and dark times both of these items we don't have we have budgeted for them in the past but they've never made the cut okay any questions here none do i have a so motion move. second i have a motion and a second to approve yeah. the budget amendment in the amount of five thousand dollars any discussion here none. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Y
Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Vice Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Sheriff, sure. anything you got to share with us this morning? Uh, I'd ask that you uh, once again continue to keep Deputy Bellingham in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, he is uh, improving some. It's very slowly. He's stated that the days are very long and hard. It's very strenuous on him and tough. But uh, he is determined to uh, to get back to us. We still don't have a timeline. But uh, we all look forward to having him back in our office in some capacity. And uh, just ask that the public continues to support us in that, that process. So. Any questions this morning for the sheriff? All right. Captain Scott, good morning, sir. Good morning. Glad to have you with us. Thank Appreciate you. what both of you do. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a good day. <clears throat> All right. Item seven would be economic development to approve a budget amendment and the purchase agreement for infrastructure phase three in the industrial park. Mr. Jeff Wood. Chairman, how are you? Commissioners? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, ready to report uh, on our phase three of our water extension on the industrial park. This is predominantly around lot 19. As you can see from the picture, uh, we have a design that would allow us to maximize uh, lot 19 uh, so that it wouldn't impede on any kind of development for the larger tracts that would be left after Project Drum and Project Well, which you heard about earlier from the public hearing. It also allows us to have another easement that would get to the cemetery. Uh, to our property, so it would actually have two different options between that and the utility easement that actually goes south of the cemetery as well. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, due to uh, material costs increase, uh, the lowest bid was Jimco Construction. However, um, the budget will need to be increased by $50,890 uh, to meet that uh, requirement. Uh, fortunately, some of that will be covered uh, under phase two. We had an in infrastructure development fund grant. Uh, that came under budget, which by the way was also under Jimco construction. So we do have $19,988.86 from last year's budget to add to this year's budget. Uh, Jimco came in at the lowest bid. Uh, Vaughn Melton, our engineer, as well as purchasing, reviewed uh, their bid packet and found them to be qualified to, to work on this project. Uh, and uh, so I come in front of the board to ask for the budget amendment of $50,890 to include the cost increase and the grant revenue, and then also to allow the department to enter into purchase agreement with Jimco Construction to finish phase three. Um, this is an important phase. As you can see, it connects it to the northern part of the park, creating a loop, which will be important for not only Drum and Well, but the remaining 20-some acres of property for Lot 19 uh, to provide things like sprinkler services. All right, any questions for Mr. Wood? <clears throat> Chairman, I would make, make a motion we move on this. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. And the motion is for the budget amendment and also for the other uh, action items you see requested there. Any discussion? Here, yes, sir. Uh, yes, Jeff, sir. just one quick question. Yes, sir. We're coming under the uh, Highway 70. Mm -hmm. We'll obviously have water on this side of 70. Is mm -hmm. it? So that we, it's coming from both directions. What's the, what's the need to come under the highway? So this will create a loop connecting both together. That's what I want to make sure we understand. Yeah. So we have a loop, so it's coming from both directions out. Yep. And from my understanding, from from the city of New Bern's water department, this will effectively um, be the last piece that we would need for our property in that area to okay. to, to deal with issues that we've had ongoing for quite some time. Thank you. Sure. Good question. Any other questions? Any discussion? Hearing none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McKay? Yes. Vice Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, sir. All right, next we have uh, elections. Miss Melanie Ray, good morning. Good morning. How are you doing today? I'm good. good. Um, I come before you this morning to um, request funds for us to be able to notify all active voters in Craven County of the um, redistricting changes, um, which we are required to do by law. Um, since filing starts December 6th, we have to get these cards out before then in case someone moves into a new district and wants to file in that district. Um, those that are changing, of course, of U.S. Congress is now District 1, went from 3. So this here made all the active voters be able to get cards. North Carolina Senate is now 3, used to be 2. 
North Carolina House, we used to have 3 and 13, which 3 was down here. I mean, 3 and 79. 3 was here, 79 was here. Now it's switched. 3 is on top, and New District 13 is on the bottom. City of New Bern uh, had about 1,500 addresses that were effective, and then the school board had some redistricting changes. I don't know the exact number on that, um, but the maps, um, I do have the maps. I do have maps for all of these, and um, GIS has set up our view so we can start seeing the um, changes. We can't start making changes until the state board certifies all the November elections that happened this year. Um, so we have a small time frame to get the changes made and get the voter cards out. Our goal is to have all the 60,000 plus voter cards mailed by December 3rd. And these are those funds to do that. All right, any questions for Ms. Yeah, uh, the school board redistricting, that's more in line with the county redistricting now? I, I, I don't know, because I just now have seen the map, so I don't know. Mr. County Manager, you want to address I that? think, uh, Commissioner Mart, there's some changes, there's some differences between the school board and the county that they would not align. They they chose some different criteria than the county commissioners did, which caused some, some subtle changes uh, in certain areas and some more drastic changes in others. The biggest difference, I would think, uh, Commissioner Liner, would be in the Havelock, Commissioner McCabe, and, and that area down there, okay. and probably the Newburn area as well. Right. And, of course, their election's new this year as well. It's now partisan, and they run um, the people who live in the district. Well, if there's a primary vote for only people in that district, and then in November, the people in the district vote for their district rep, just like y'all. That's They've changed that to follow your... Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? All right, hearing none, uh, do Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the budget amendment in the amount of $30,000. Any further discussion on the motion? <coughs> Hear none, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Vice Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Melanie. Appreciate what you do. Thank you. All right, Commissioners, next you have the appointments. You have those appointments that are pending. Are there any nominations from the floor for any of those? Hear none, we will move to current. The first one you have, Craven County Recreation Advisory Council. Ms. Carolyn Squires from District 3 seeks reappointment. <laughs> Nominations from the floor. I would reappoint her. All right, oh. we, we have the mo nomination for Ms. Squires. Uh, Commissioner Smith. I have not personally heard from her, but she did um, give inf send information in that she is interested in continuing her position and the department. Okay. We'd like to have her, so I see no reason why she should not continue. Okay. All right, we have that nomination. Are there any additional nominations? Here are none. Uh, she will be accepted by acclamation. Coast City Craven County Library Board, uh, Ms. Theresa Hodges. Um, she is uh, eligible for reappointment, Madam Clerk. I would ask that the board would, um, uh, I would nominate her and ask her that she be reappointed. Are there other nominations from the floor? Here none, she will be accepted by acclamation also. All right, you see the upcoming appointments there for December, the Juvenile Crime Prevention, Craven County Health Board, and Fireman's Relief Board of Trustees. Any other appointments to consider this morning? All right, we'll go to County Attorney's report, Mr. Eric Grady. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have no report this morning. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, County Manager's report, Mr. Jack Vite. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners. Appreciate the opportunity again to uh, be with you this morning. I have one item, and at your uh, November 1st meeting, you were made aware that Leslie Young has started as a uh, interim tax assessor, uh, mainly because Mr. Antry's uh, going to be here until November the 30th. To make this transition, um, when his retirement takes place on November 30th, the board will need to take action today to appoint Leslie Young as the tax assessor effective December 1st, 2021 at midnight to fulfill the vacated term of Ronnie Entry. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. The request is, you've heard it from the county manager. Any discussion? Hearing none. Uh, Madam Clerk, if you will, call the roll on this, please. Commissioner Mitchell? Yes. Commissioner Smith? Yes. Commissioner Liner? Yes. Commissioner Mark? Yes. Commissioner McCabe? Yes. Mr. Chairman Booker? Yes. Chairman Jones? Yes. Mr. Chairman, that's all I have unless the board has anything for me. Any questions for the county manager? Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
All right, commissioner's reports. Um, Commissioner Mark, we'll start with you this morning. Okay. Um, start with the hospital. Uh, I haven't gotten a report this morning from Rafe, but uh, as of last Friday, we only had six people that were COVID related in the hospital. Two were in uh, ICU and in intubators, and we had no deaths. Uh, tentative TDA board meeting on uh, last week, and uh, some of the numbers, uh, in September of 2020, we only had taken in 121,395, and as of December, uh, September of 2021, we've taken in 207,982, which is an increase of 86, uh, eight, dollars and I do credit a good part of it to uh, the convention center being renovated, and I think that the advertising gentlemen that are there are doing a good job. So uh, I, I think that was a pretty good meeting. Uh, Fairfield Harbor, uh, Foley, who was taking care of boats in Fairfield Harbor, <laughs> one of the boats sank and a lot of the stuff from the boat has come up above, and uh, that's been taken care of by Fairfield Harbor. However, uh, I was contacted by Wildlife. Wildlife said that it's gonna take about three years before they can remove the boat. <laughs> so I've been in contact with, I've uh, written to a, a gentleman by the name of Ben Solomon, Solomon, who's in charge of that area. I haven't heard from him yet. But I spoke to uh, Senator Sanderson, <laughs> and he said he would get involved with me on it to get the boat removed a little bit faster. And that's about it. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner McKay. I have a question. <laughs> yes, uh, Commissioner Smith. If, if your boat sinks, you have no responsibility in getting it out of the water. I have no idea about uh, the responsibility. I All I know is sure. folders. Uh, Foley's boat uh, went down, and uh, th it's up to the state, I guess, to remove it. Is that correct, uh, Mr. County Manager? Um, commissioners, uh, it is, this whole topic has been a burr under everybody's saddle in this part of the world for a long time, particularly since Florence. I uh, recall the uh, county had to attend to cleaning up barges in the Trent River after the construction of, of the new bridges some years ago. There are criminal statutes for abandoning uh, vessels in uh, what I will loosely term public trust waters. The problem is finding the individuals and serving them and you know using that process we find that when somebody abandons a boat they are very careful to remove anything that would identify them. They'll grind off the whole identification number. They'll remove the registration, uh, y y you name it. So um, it, it, it is something that we can address if we find the owner. The boats are not insured. People don't insure boats. Uh, people can insure boats. Um, I don't believe it's a legal requirement as it would be with a motor vehicle. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I think there was a, uh, maybe the Coastal Federation had a grant and they cleaned up, you know, 200 boats um, in this part of the world over the last year or two. And it's just a, uh, it's just an awful problem that there's no practical solution to. Mr. Attorney, uh, did that have something to do with Florence because of the hurricane that it wasn't really responsive of the person that owned the boat? Uh, yes, sir, um, and I will say anecdotally, um, the, the, the number absolutely increased after Florence, almost exponentially. Um, you all may remember there were a couple of boats anchored right off Union Point Park for, for a while until fairly uh, recently, and I know in uh, Carter County, um, they, they've had a time also, you know, those boats sink and people just walk away um it, it's interesting some of these folks live on their boats so um they really don't have any place to find them they'll go buy another boat and you know keep on to wherever they're going so it's uh a, a, you know, a set of folks that can be hard to locate even if you uh, are able to get um 
correct ownership information. All right, uh, yeah. Commissioner McKay. The Chair, I don't have anything to report this time. All right, um, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. First of all, I would like to thank all the citi citizens, faith communities, and organizations uh, around Craven County for their recognition and celebration of Veterans Day uh, last Thursday, and also to all the elected officials who came to the Veterans Day lunch at Temple Baptist on Thursday at 11, and, um, and some of our people here. I helped serve our veterans, and that was most important. Excuse me, Chair. I was on something that uh, it had to be a veteran to attend it, uh, the very thing. So the Indian school could have went? Well, yeah. well not my well, understanding. Well, yes, but many of us who were there were also serving, so. I'm not, I'm not serving, but I'm saying uh, you say that uh, only veterans are allowed to come in, and you got through ID. So that's one reason I didn't show up. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Uh, Commissioner Liner. Sorry, I just piggyback on Commissioner Mitchell's comments. I mean, we had a good turnout. We had over 200 people show up for the luncheon. I appreciate those who did attend and come out. <clears throat> and I appreciate this board for what it's did over the past couple of years on supporting the Veterans Council and Jeff on putting on this luncheon. So I thank all of you all for getting that done. And I've talked to vice chair at the meeting and everything else. Within a 50 mile radius of New Bern, of our vet center here, we've got 78,297 vets. Mm, a lot. Within a 50 mile radius. And we're number three in the state for funds coming in from the federal government to support the vets of the amount of money that's coming in. So we're, we're doing good things here for our vets. We've got some other programs that Jack and I are working on trying to get coming in here as a, as a pilot program with the VA. So uh, I thank all of you for what you've done mm -hmm. to step up to it's good. put it on our vets. Other than that, Mr. Chair, that's it, sir. And, and we thank you, Commissioner Liner and Commissioner Mitchell. Y'all stood up and, and fought for the vets of uh, mm -hmm. this county and surrounding areas and helped make our veterans' office what it is today. Definitely you had cooperation from your colleagues, but thank you both for your leadership. Commissioner Smith. I really don't have anything, but I, I would like to thank our veterans for their service and thank our citizens for their support of mm -hmm. veterans. Thank you, ma'am. Vice Chair Booker. Yeah, I hate to uh, continue this discussion uh, longer than we need to, but I, I, at the Veterans Luncheon, it was heartwarming to see uh, one veteran there, I believe from World War II. Uh, there aren't many of those folks left. Uh, there, I read someplace that we lose about 1,000 a day, uh, World War II veterans, and uh, there was one gentleman there from World War II. There were a number of others that were there with walkers, with um, people assisting them. Um, and it, it was just a heartwarming day to see all these people who have fought for our country, served our country, and uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So, um, again, thank you to all the veterans in our county and beyond who have served. And that point that um, Commissioner Liner just made about how many there are uh, located in our region. Uh, it's, uh, it's really uh, a great thing that we have all these veterans living in our area. So again, thanks to everybody that, uh, that served. Thank you, Mr. Vice Chair. Uh, commissioners, just I know we've got um, a full week this week, a lot of us with meetings and everything, but uh, Friday at uh, 3 p.m., is the 90th anniversary of our airport. Um, all of you, I think, have been invited to attend. Congressman Murphy will be here, will be our guest, um, kind of, if you want to say, our guest speaker for that occasion. Um, it's going to be a great day, so um, a lot to be proud of uh, about our airport. And uh, so I ask you, please, if you're able to attend, please put that on your calendars. And uh, on behalf of the towns of Dover and Coe City, we got some Christmas parades going to uh, occur this year. 
Um, the mayors of both respective towns uh, have asked me to extend invitations to you. I know that uh, in your individual communities, you will have some going on also, but um, I'll get the clerk to send those out. But uh, Dover's will be December 11th. Coast Cities will be December the 12th. All right, anything else to bring before you? Yes. Mr. Chairman, I, I should have mentioned that um, our Deputy Bellingham, who is in uh, Atlanta in rehab, uh, there have been a number of fundraisers for him. A lot of money has been raised, but we're going to need a lot of money because, uh, speaking of the sheriff, uh, when he comes back, if he's not able to walk on his own, and at this point nobody knows, but it's still very possible that he'll be in a wheelchair, um, he's going to have to have a modification of his apartment or house, whatever, uh, you know, counter levels, uh, all that kind of thing. So. Uh, we hope that people will continue to be generous and, and do that and, and also continue to send cards to him uh, with well-wishing so that he can uh, not just feel like he's down there alone. I know he got a lot of cards initially, but then probably they've tended to mm. stop. So we need to keep that going. If, if you haven't done so, send him a card and let him know that you appreciate what he has done for our county. Thank you. Very well put. Commissioners, uh, I wish each of you a happy Thanksgiving. I don't think we'll be back together as a, as a board until after uh, Thanksgiving. Our next meeting will be the first meeting in December. But I hope you all have a wonderful time with family and friends. Nothing else to come before the Board of Commissioners. I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? We stand adjourned.